Anyone that you know has hair can benefit from learning about the role of stress in hair loss. So I'm sure you know someone that has stress and someone that has hair. So Hello everyone, welcome back to Fundamentals with Dr. Adobe Obasi. I'm a physician scientist board certified in dermatology and dermatopathology. In this video, we'll be recapping the Instagram live that I had with my colleague, Dr. Shoshana Kindred on Friday of last week. In the Instagram live, we discussed about the hair cycle, talked about different stressors in the hair, talked about different diseases that are affected by stress, and finally, we had three lucky giveaways. Dr. Sushana Kindred is a dermatologist specializing in hair loss disorders and their treatments. She's also a pioneer, being one of the first dermatologists to have an associated hair salon in her practice. I think that's a brilliant concept. So first, I'll talk about the hair cycle. The hair cycle is simply phases that the hair follicle goes through to make hair and shed hair so that new hair can grow. So first we have the anagen phase, which is the growth phase. The anagen phase is de determined genetically um, as well as by your environment, and it can vary in the length. The longer the anagen phase, the longer the hair. Next we have the telogen phase. The telogen phase is called the resting phase. It lasts on average about 100 days to three or three months, and it's when the hair rests and preps itself for the next phase, which is to break down. Next phase called catagen phase is a breakdown phase which precedes or comes before the shedding phase or exogen phase. So all throughout your life, your hair undergoes this cycle. I wanted to describe different stressors that can play a role in how well your hair functions. The stressors can be internal stress or external stress from the outside. When it's from inside the body, things like inflammation, things like high cortisol level due to chronic lifestyle stress can, and diet and nutrition can affect the hair growth and the hair cycle. While external stressors like hair care practices, different styles, tension, um, the environment can, use of heat for example, can stress the hair from the outside. The four conditions we're going to talk about are trichotillomania, traction alopecia, alopecia areata, and telogen effluvium. Alopecia refers to hair loss, just a general broad definition. And then there are different types of alopecia or hair loss. The hair loss can be scarring, meaning there's a permanent loss of the hair follicle where the hair grows from, or it could be non-scarring, which means that there is some chance of the hair coming back because the hair follicle is still present. So first, let's talk about traction alopecia. It's a very common disorder, this disorder related to chronic tension on the hair follicle, kind of a tug of war for many years that then ultimately results in damage to the hair follicle. From tight buns, tight braids, tight hairstyles that cause tension to the hair follicle. Initially, traction alopecia is non-scarring, meaning there's a chance of the hair coming back, but over time, the trauma gets so much that it permanently destroys the hair follicle and becomes a scarring process. The key thing with all of the hair loss disorders that we see in dermatology is early intervention. See a dermatologist as early as you can when you're experiencing hair loss so that it can be treated, because every day that passes by, you may be losing valuable hair follicles that can grow back. And non-scarring, conditions can transition to a scarring form of that condition in some cases, like traction alopecia. The second condition that we talked about on the Instagram live is called trichotillomania. This is a little bit different because it's primarily a mental stress issue. There's really nothing wrong with the hair follicle, but because of the mental stress and anxiety, 
of the patient. The patient causes damage to their own hair by pulling, plucking, playing actively with the hair. It's actually part of the obsessive compulsive disorder spectrum of diseases. And in dermatology, we tend to see trichotillomania, which is compulsive picking of the hair to relieve stress. We also tend to see neurotic excoriation, which is just picking at the skin. And then finally, we also tend to see biting of the nails. Some patients that plug their hair also eat the hair called trichophagia, which can lead to a complication called the bezoar, where you plug up your intestines with all these balls of hair, like a fur ball. It's just that unlike cats, we don't have the mechanisms to get rid of that. So to treat trichotillomania, it's important to involve a mental health professional to make sure that both aspects of the condition is treated. And another thing is also to distract the hands by using things like a fidget spinner, stress ball, or anything that knitting, crocheting, things that can keep the hands busy so that it doesn't reach to the hair to cause damage. The third condition we talked about is called telogen effluvium. Telogen effluvium is a pretty common experience because stress directly um, affects it. Whenever I see a patient in clinic with telogen effluvium, I tend to ask them, three months ago, did you have any major stress? It could be a death in the family, a recent pregnancy, a major hospitalization, a major surgery. And almost always, there's always a history of some major stress. And the reason being is after that stress, the hairs rest for three months before um, shedding on mass. The body deviates resources from hair growth to address the stressor, like childbirth or like a major surgery. And then after addressing it, a lot of hairs are put to sleep and then they shed three months later. Patients with telogen effluvium, most of them will recover because it's not a scarring process. However, a few of them can result, um, can have a chronic process going on where they chronically shed hair. So unlike trichotillomania where the hair is broken by the patient, there's nothing wrong fundamentally with the hair follicle. Telogen effluvium, internal, stru internal stressors cause the hair to accelerate the cycle to a resting phase to deviate resources so that the body can handle the stress. The next phase after the telogen or resting phase is to shed. So a lot of hair shed at the same time, which can be distressing to patients. And finally, Dr. Kinder and I address alopecia areata. This is a different type of stressor, which is inflammation from the inside um, of the body. And so the body's immune system attacks the hair follicle where it grows, which is the, um, or where the hair initially grows, which is the hair bulb. And so the hair bulb is attacked and results in a non-scarring, thankfully, process, which stress can make worse. So inflammation is from the immune system. It's used a lot in dermatology because it can result in a lot of disease states. So the immune system gets revved up and that is excellent if it's revving up and activating towards an infection or towards cancer. But when it starts to attack the body's different organs like the hair follicle, the skin, the joints, it becomes a problem. I'm going to go more into the immune system, how it learns to recognize that this is the body's um, tissue, leave it alone. This is an infection, attack it. We'll go over how that happens, as well as delve a little bit more deeply into these hair loss conditions. But each of them have different types of stressors that affect them. And then finally, we talked about CCCA, which is Central Centrifugal Cicatricial Alopecia. Say that quickly five times. Um, CCCA is common in um, patients that have ethnic hair. So black patients are most commonly affected by this condition. Um, it results in a scarring hair loss that starts out with short broken hairs at the vertex or the middle part of the scalp. And then eventually it becomes bald and it starts to spread towards the front. Um, the CCCA can be effectively treated when caused, um, caught early. And so I highly encourage patients to see their dermatologist if they're noticing short broken hairs on the vertex or the central crown of the scalp. 
And then finally we had our giveaway and we um, had three lucky winners walk away with Nutrafol multivitamin, which brings me to another type of stress, nutrition. It's important to know that hair is a protein. Proteins need vitamins and minerals to function most effectively. However, um, our current diet may be lacking in one or two or more vitamins and minerals and can affect how the hair grows. So supplementing can be very helpful. Now I'm a huge fan of eating natural proteins versus artificial or protein supplements. All of that goes into the body and is broken down into amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein. I plan on going more into diet and how it affects the hair, skin, and nails in future videos. But just as an introduction, it's important to get natural protein into your system and then you can supplement with the vitamins either through natural means or through a supplement. Every time we take a pill whether or a supplement or a powder, we're introducing the product, the protein, but also the preservatives and the fillers that are included to make it last on the shelf. That's why we have to be careful with processed foods. The liver and the kidney have to do a lot more work and sometimes what they make from breaking down these preservatives and fillers can increase inflammation in our system. Comment below if you've ever experienced hair loss, if you've ever seen a dermatologist, or just if you've familiar with or unfamiliar with any of the contents I just presented. Please subscribe to this channel, click on the notification bell as well as the like button and share with your friends and family. Anyone that you know has hair can benefit from learning about the role of stress in hair loss. So I'm sure you know someone that has stress and someone that has hair. So let them know that um, they can subscribe to this channel and learn a little bit more how to best manage their hair growth. I want to wish you a wonderful day and God bless.